Numerical Computation, Chapter 8, Video 6. We will look at two examples of families of orthogonal functions. The first one, in the form of polynomials, is the Legendre polynomials. So on the interval for x from negative 1 to 1, these polynomials are defined as following. So p0 is 1, p1 is x, p2 is 3x squared minus 1 over 2, and p3 is 5x cubed minus 3x over 2, and so on and so forth. And uh, you can define this as many as you like, and each polynomial pn will be a polynomial of degree n. So these polynomials are um, actually solutions to the Legendre equation. It's a um, eigenvalue problem um, for ordinary differential equations of second order. And um, if you have taken for 11, maybe you have heard of this. But we will not get into details. So the first example now will be um, We'll verify that at least the first three, p0, p1, p2, are orthogonal to each other. So we begin with a, an observation that p0 and p2, they are even functions, and p1 is odd. Then this implies that p0 times p1 will be an odd function, and p1 times p2 is also an odd function, because an even function multiplies with an odd function yields an odd function. And now, if they are both odd, and you integrate them from negative 1 to 1, that is, around an interval with the origin placed at the center, then these integrals are zero because the integral from negative 1 to 0 will equal to the one from 0 to 1 but with opposite sign, so they add up to be zero. So p0 and p1 are orthogonal and so is p1 and p2. So the only one remains to be checked would be um, p0 and p2 that they are orthogonal to each other. This is done by a simple um, integration calculation. So plugging the expression for p0 and p2, we'll get take out the half, we'll have just 3x squared minus 1. Work out the integral for this one, we get x to the third minus x, and evaluate it at negative 1 and 1. And you see this exactly give me 0. So therefore we have verified that these three Legendre polynomials are orthogonal to each other. And now we want to find a function g, which is a linear combination of the first three Legendre polynomials on the interval from negative 1 to 1. We would use the function g to best approximate the following function, f of x, which is negative 1 on the interval from negative 1 to 0, and 1 on the interval from 0 to 1. So note that this function is not continuous at x equal to 0. So when we say best approximates, we mean in the least square sense. So we will try to minimize the least square error. Well, with the derivation that we already had, we already know that if the basis functions are orthogonal, then the coefficients ai's simply can be computed as following. So ai will be the integration of f with pi on the numerator, and then on the denominator is the integration of pi squared. Okay, so we just need to work out these integrals. And we observe first that my function f is an odd function, and p0 is even and p2 is even. Therefore, f times p0 and f times p2 becomes two odd functions. And therefore, the numerator for those a's will be 0. 
exactly because the reason if you integrate an odd function from negative 1 to 1, you get 0. So we only need to um, compute the last one, that is a1, which is an uh, integral for, of f times p1 on the numerator and integral of p1 squared on the denominator. We can plug in the expression for um, f and p and work it out. And we notice that f times p1 actually becomes an even function. So therefore, the integral from negative 1 to 1 is simply the integral from 0 to 1 and twice. Okay, That's why we write it here. So we can just work out these integrals. So working out these um, integration, the numerator becomes 2 times 0.5, where this integral is an area of a triangle with unit um, length on the two um, diagonal side. And the integral of this is just 2 over 3. You can easily verify that. And then, in the end, I get 3 over 2. Therefore, we can write out our so-called best approximation. It is simply um, a1 times p1, which is um, 3 over 2 times x. Now let's look at another family of orthogonal functions. So from your differential equation course um, in sophomore 200 level, math 250 or math 251, we have learned that the set of trig functions defined on the interval from negative pi to pi, these functions, that is 1 and sine nx, cosine nx for n equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to infinity, so infinitely many of them, they are all orthogonal to each other. So this means if you integrate, take any two functions in this set that are not the same, the integral from negative pi to pi shall be zero. So if you compare taking one with all the sine functions, the integral is zero for every n, and one with any cosine functions for every n, the integral is zero, and taking any two sine functions with n different from n is 0, and the same thing for cosine, if n does not equal to m, then this equal to 0. And also, if you take any sine function and any cosine with any n or m, and the integral will be 0. Okay, so this, um, we, you can easily verify this by working out the integral. So we'll skip the detail, and if you're curious, you can work this out on your own and be sure of the fact. Okay, now, using this, we have this example now. So given m, m is a number, a positive integer number, and sufficiently large, maybe, and we want to approximate a function fx defined on the interval negative pi to pi by the following. We call this gx, which is a constant c0 plus summing over all m functions, which each of them is a a number a n times the sine n x plus another coefficient b n times cosine n x in the best possible way, meaning minimizing the least square error. Okay, so you know um, by choosing different values of a n b n and c zero, we can um, find the best choice to minimize the error. So using the orthogonality property that we um, stated on the previous page, and we know now the computation of the coefficients is very simple because you, in the end you have a diagonal system. So for the a n, what you would have will be on the numerator is the f times the function where the basis function where a n stand in the front with, so it's sine n. And in the denominator is exactly that sine n squared. Okay? And the same thing happens for b. The numerator is f multiplied by the function where b is standing in front of the basis function. And the denominator is the basis function squared, so cosine n squared. And the constant term you can think is c0 times 1, where 1 is your basis function. So the 
and numerator becomes integral of f times 1 and the denominator will be integrating 1 from negative pi to pi which would actually give me 2 pi so I lost a pi here so this is not 2 this is actually 2 pi so we end with this final um, observation so if we let the number m go to infinity then we see that we actually have exactly the Fourier series for the function f. So this analysis says that if you take partial sum of a Fourier series, then what you're getting is actually the best approximation to the function possibly obtained by using that finite set of the trig function as the basis function to form linear combination of it. Okay, so I hope you find this interesting and exciting, and uh, see you next time.